Okay, so I had completely forgotten there was going to be a new trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 until I woke up this morning. So I'm going to do uh, that thing that I do very rarely, which is to do like a proper reaction video where you actually see me react and I get my immediate thoughts. Uh, no editing, no thinking about it before I start blabbering, which is obviously why it's probably going to be a bit rambly. Um, before I watch it, I will say I'm a little bit nervous to watch this trailer. I am very excited for this movie and I've liked all the marketing put out so far. Um, but the thing is with these sorts of, you know, well, I think it's called a second trailer but you know there's been the teaser there's been the trailer now there's this um at this point everything we've seen has been general feel isolated moments um which has all sold me very well usually by this time we start getting into more actual plot details um and that's where i get nervous because once i've already made up my mind to see a movie i kind of like to know less about it i love to be surprised in the theater and if i was a person with more self uh control i just wouldn't watch the trailer but um i am not that person with enough self-control to stop myself from watching it so here we go let's see how we do hope you're ready it'll be here any minute oh i'm ready is that a rifle you don't know what a rifle looks like <laughs> it's just swords were your thing and guns were mine but i guess we're both doing guns now i just didn't know that <laughs> still wonderfully awkward Okay, Groot, plug-in in the amp. That's lovely. I see it within you. That's a lot of gold. Jealousy. Ooh. It is our duty. Okay. Well, that kind of reminds me of the Nova Corps, just a ton of ships. Dude. <laughs> I like that they're using this same song again. Love Fleetwood Mac. So we're saving the galaxy again? Yep. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We're really going to be able to jack up our price if we're two-time galaxy savers. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk about it more at the end. I'm actually liking Rocket more in this one, or the feel of it more in this one than from the last one. <laughs> oh, Groot's so cute. Sometimes the thing you're searching for your whole life, it's right there by your side all along. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> all you do is yell at each other. You're not friends. Yeah. After all these years, I've found you. And who the hell are you? I'm your dad, Peter. You do not look like a living planet to me. Okay, well, we'll see how that pans out. Um... That was good. It was fine. I did not give away a bunch of plot, which was obviously what I said I was afraid of. That didn't happen, so props to that. It was mostly uh, more of the same uh, in terms of giving the general feel, highlighting the characters, and it just um, it sort of lingered on different moments for each of them a little bit more, which I think is um, a good thing. Now, uh, what I mentioned about Rocket saying I like him better in this, I didn't dislike Rocket in the first movie. Um, he was fine, but I think in some ways uh, Marvel wasn't entirely sure who the breakout characters of that first movie were going to be, and I think they expected Rocket to be the real front runner, but I think for most of us it was Groot with maybe uh, Drax as a secondary, um, which is not, again, not to say that Rocket was bad, but what it looks like here is they're... they're putting less emphasis on sort of him as the wisecracker and um i mean he still got some but i liked how much we saw of him tinkering with stuff of him building with stuff and it looks like they're going to put more emphasis on his role as the tech guy as opposed to you know oh look he's got this big gun and he's a little raccoon well yeah you made that joke the first one what else can he do well he can build all this crap that does all these crazy things that's a that's a nice emphasis he did a little of that in the first one um and i think that's a good way to sort of put 
uh, as the main emphasis on him going forward, especially as we're adding new members to the thing. Um, we get a little bit of Nebula's vibe. I'll still be interested to see how she fits into this. I'm very glad she's back, and I'm really glad they didn't kill her off. I thought Karen Gillan... I mean, I like her anyways, but I thought she was a much more compelling general presence than Ronan the Accuser was, um, and I just, I talked that up to, chalk that up to personal bias and the performance. Um, you know, little glimpse of Kurt Russell looking like, looking like Kurt Russell, so, you know. That I, I think he looks about how he expected most of us to look. That whole, you know, you're not friends, we're family line. Um, I'm glad they had Drax put a capper at the end of it because until he did that, it felt, um, well, it, it felt very fast and furious, honestly. Um, which always has been Diesel going, we're family, family, family is what's important, etc., etc., etc. So it felt a little like that, so I'm glad they were able to cap a joke on it to sort of differentiate it a little. Um... But other than that, it was it was good. It gave me more of what I was hoping to get. You know, more moments, more of the general feel. Like I said, I really like that they um, used the chain, uh, the song by Fleetwood Mac again. I love that song. I like I like the marketing on these. I like that they pick that they've picked a period song to be like, and this is the one we're we're doing the marketing with. And last time it was Hooked on a Feeling. Now it's the chain. Um, so I. It, and, and like I said, it did not give a ton of specific plot away. I mean, we see, you know, this golden race of whatevers, um, you know, seem to be the ones recruiting them. But I mean, that's going to that's gonna be front end stuff. I'm pretty sure that tentacle monster encounter is going to be one of the first, if not the first thing that we see them do. So um, the stuff that seems to, that they seem to have laid out is all front end stuff. And I'm always fine with the front end of plot getting shown in marketing. It's when anything that happens after the halfway mark getting shown that I start to get iffy. So, um, and I mean, there were probably moments that we saw that were from the latter half, but I, I don't feel like I, I don't feel like I know the plot. I don't know what they're really out to do. I don't know what the obstacles are in their way. I don't know the circumstances under which Nebula and Yondu um, join the group. And for me, that's all good. I don't want to know those things before I go in because then I'm stuck sitting there, you know, just seeing how they connect to the things that I already knew were going to happen. And that's not how I like to watch a movie. I like to not know where it's going, if that's possible. Doesn't happen often, but I love it when it does. So good trailer. Uh, didn't blow me away, but didn't, didn't mess up the enthusiasm I already had. So I'll take it. So that'll do it for this one, guys. I'll try and turn this around as quickly as I can. That's the reason I'm doing it this way, so I don't have to edit it. Um, so uh, that will wrap it up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, check me out on Twitter at Council of Geeks. Give a listen to the Council of Geeks podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher. And until next time, this council is adjourned. <laughs>